Hi, Sharon Craig here with you this morning, sharing this super cool ruler with you called a Cutting Corners. Now, when you look at the ruler, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking it's there to cut triangles and you don't need to listen anymore because you have lots of rulers that cut triangles or lots of ways to cut triangles. That's not what this ruler does. This is not going to cut triangles. And when I want to explain a little bit about the ruler. You're going to see two sets of lines. And I've had the question, why two sets of lines? One of the sets of lines cuts in increments of quarter inch. So one and a quarter, one and three quarters, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, etc. All the way up to five inches. The other side of the ruler cuts in half inch increments. It was just way too busy, trust me on this, to have all the lines together. So we've separated them out. So you've got to pay attention and make sure that you've got the lines that you're going to use. So what you're going to do is you're going to position your ruler on the corner of a square or a rectangle and cut away the corner, cutting corners. So when that happens, you've left the seam allowance on the remaining piece. Now what am I going to do with this rule? How am I going to use this rule? Well, one of the things you can do with it is to cut odd shapes. Now I could use all sorts of fancy terms like octagon, pentagon, hexagon, um, trapezoid, but you know what happens when I use those terms? You get all confused. You get all, okay, turn me off, I'm not listening anymore. So we're just going to lump all those shapes together and call them etc. We're going to cut all sorts of funny etc. shapes today. Now, I know that you've all made octagons. An octagon is, is an eight-sided shape. This is the, the traditional snowball block. And I know what you're thinking. If I wanted to make a snowball, I would just take squares, lay them on the corners, and sew corner to corner. Well, I'm going to prove to you how much more effective it is if you don't do that, how much less fabric it's going to take. So this is one thing we're going to do. And I'm going to start with this pentagon shape right here, or what I like to think of as the house. You can remember a house. I know you can. So in the past, when you've wanted to make a shape like that, oh. You're wondering when you've ever made a shape like that? Well, you know, there's lots of traditional blocks out there that use this shape. And maybe quilters lately have been eliminating these particular blocks because of shapes like that. But one of my favorites is a block called Weather Vane, and it's a simple shape. Well, if you were to lay squares on the corners and sew corner to corner, you could do that and come up with this shape. But it would take two of these blue squares to do this. Instead, I only need one blue square. See how much less fabric it's going to take? So a lot less waste. So I start with a square, and in this particular instance I started with a four and a half inch square because I want a finished four inch block. And so I'm going to use two inches. So I find the two inch lines on my ruler, and I position the two inch lines on two of the corners. and. Now, I'm going to tell you to throw it away. In reality, do I throw it away? Probably not. I have this little box under my cutting table that says cut away corners. And maybe this one I wouldn't save because that's pretty small. But anything of significant size, yes, I do save it. Not necessarily to use as is because I've not just cut a two inch triangle, which is what many of you think that we've just done. But instead, what I've cut is my pentagon shape or the house shape. And I have done all the math for you that leaves the seam allowance on this piece. Now all I have to do is take the square, lay my ruler down, and cut corner to corner. I'm not using my cutting corners ruler now for measuring or any of those triangle shapes. I just cut corner to corner. And then I would put one of these triangles on each side, and when I sew, then what I'm left with is the exact piece that I need. When you position this triangle on the edge there, you see what I'm doing here? I'm going to put it in front of the white. The little tips are going to extend out. And you're going to sew from the little V on this side to the little V on that side. Once you've put on one, then you're going to sew on the second one. And there you go. Done. If you're not going to throw these away, I don't want you to leave them on your cutting table because you're going to look at those someday and you're going to think, oh, that's a good triangle and you're going to try to use it somewhere. So if you don't throw it away, be like me and have one of these cutaway uh, boxes under the table that you can put these things in. 
Now the octagon, how did I do the octagon? If you can picture where your octagon or an eight-sided figure, or as some of you are going to think of this as a snowball block, if you can picture the way the octagon looks in a square, that's what we're going to start with, is we're going to start by cutting a square. We're going to eliminate the four corners. Now you can eliminate any size you want. I started with a six and a half inch square here. So if I started with a six and a half inch square, if I want this to be equal three divisions across there, I'm going to use the two inch corner, one third of the block size. You can use any size you want, but I put my two inch lines on the corner so that they match up and cut. That's it. Do that three more times and you've got the exact octagon that you need. You're going to take your squares that you want to create for the corners and that's finished size plus 7 eighths of an inch. Cut 2 and 7 eighths inches, slice corner to corner, and you've got your, your triangles. Two squares gives four triangles. There's your exact replacement pieces that you're going to put back on there. Now some of you are wondering about, oh Sher Sharon's spouting off all this math, I'm never going to remember all this. You know what? You don't have to, because in the booklet that comes with the ruler, I give you all that information. There's charts in here that are going to tell you exactly what you need to know. Here's the chart for the plane replacement triangles to go back on. So if you did two inches, you just read across here, you're going to see it says to cut a two and seven eighths inch square and slice it once. So I'm not expecting you to know all of this. Some of you do, and if you do, you don't need to look at the charts but if you don't know it look at the charts and that will give you all the information that you need right there okay so that's the octagon what's our next shape well now we've got this elongated hexagon or again another etc shape picture how it appears in your your piece in this case my elongated hexagon fits in a rectangle in this case my elongated hexagon fits in a square and this is a very common traditional block. This piece is used frequently as a sashing piece and, and setting your blocks together. So all I did to create this shape, I cut a rectangle. If I want it to be three inches finished, I cut it three and a half by the length I need for the blocks. If it's three inches finished, the size for the triangles is half of that. So in this case, I would start by finding one and a half inches on my ruler, position those on each of the four corners, and cut. One and a half inches for the replacement triangle, you add seven eighths of an inch, one and a half plus seven eighths, two and three. 3 8 inches, cut square, slice, attach it back on. And that's all you need to do to create this particular shape. This one fits into a square. So if I want this square to be a 6 inch block, then I started by cutting a brown square 6 and a half inches. If I want to take 3 inches off the corners, you can take any size you want off. That's the beauty of knowing how to do this. You are in charge. So I could put three inches down on the corners and trim away. I could put four inches on the corner and trim away. It's whatever size you want. Once you've trimmed those pieces away from both sides, then you cut the replacement square sliced once. Sew those back on. There you go. You've got it. Now see how simple and fun this is? We're going to do one more shape today, and that's this trapezoid shape. So here I've sewn up a unit using the trapezoid, and again, this is another one that appears in a lot of traditional pieced blocks. So how do I do that? I started with a square of my green fabric. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to slice it in half, corner to corner. Put the ruler down, and cut. Now I have two triangles. I'm going to take and I can stack them one on top of another or I can do them one at a time. Doesn't make any difference. You're in charge. You can do it either way. So let's use a two inch corner cutter here. I'm going to put the two inch on the corner, on the square corner, and cut. Remember, this is waste. Throw it away. Get it off the table. Don't be confused by it. Your replacement square, 
that you cut, remember it's finish size plus 7 eighths of an inch. So cut your square, cut it corner to corner. And now attach it back on. And sew. And again, you're sewing from the notch to the notch, so it should hang over exactly the same amount on each side. So where you sew should be exactly a quarter of an inch across there. Then you're going to put another yellow triangle on the other side that was exactly the same size square you started with. Now it could be a different fabric, it doesn't have to be that same one, but in my example here I use the same fabric for the little triangle and for the big triangle. So see how fast and how simple and really how little waste there was to do all these fun shapes. What this can do is open up a whole bunch of new blocks to you that you've been avoiding because you don't know how to cut those funny shape pieces or you want to do an interesting sashing and you don't know how to create these pieces or you don't have enough fabric for sewing corner to corner across the square or you want to do a snowball as an alternating block. Hopefully I've introduced the possibilities to you. Now we got lots more things this ruler can do. One of them is to create secondary designs in blocks and another one's to do those strip triangles. So keep watching in a few minutes we'll come back. You can turn into another video and we'll show you how to do each of those in turn. Been fun visiting with you this morning. Happy quilting.